Yesterday, I was informed that I had apparently been made the subject of an Asmongold React video. And tickled pink by this, of course, I went to watch it immediately and quite enjoyed it. It was in a specific response to my video on Helldivers 2, where the developers started to ban people bringing up politics in general, regardless of whether or not you were on the left wing or the right wing, and me coming out in support of it because, yeah, that is probably the best and easiest solution to the current year politics issue. But in the video, Asmongold says two little things in two different uh, clips that I wanted to elaborate on. Because he asks, who are these people, in reference to the wokest group, and you know what, I can answer that question. I've been spending the last few years figuring out that question myself, actually. And he also states that, it, that the developers should be able to decide what goes in the game themselves. If they want a pride flag or a pride event, they should do so. And here's the thing. In theory, in a perfect world, I 100% agree. And in a situation where the developers can actually handle the real-world political implications of doing so, they should absolutely go ahead. But there is a reason why they should be discouraged from doing so, and it is directly relevant to who are these people. So I'm going to try and provide a relatively concise answer to what is in fact a very complex question. But first, let me play you the clips for context. I don't even, what even are they? Like, what are these people? Where are, like, it, it's just like, these people want to take over media and make the media agree with them. Oh, yeah, I generally am. I mean, like, I'm also completely in favor of doing it, but I'm completely in favor of primarily the developer being the one that chooses and not a group of people who think that they have a moral mandate to bully the developer into making that choice. I think that if a developer wants to have a rainbow cape and have a pride event, great, that's their right to do that. And as customers, you can either, if you don't like it, you can quit playing the game. Right then, so who are these people? See, that might sound like a very simple thing to answer, doesn't it? But actually, it's not, because what we are currently dealing with in the form of woke ideology is something that was created a long time ago and has gone through multiple iterations and countless thought leaders that creates the problem that we are currently dealing with. In fact, we've got to go back to before the Second World War to fully explore this. Now, we're not going to go too much into detail here because it would take about an hour, probably, but all the way at the beginning of this, we encountered a man by the name of Antonio Gramsci. Antonio Gramsci was a socialist of the <laughs> internationalist variant, which was very unfortunate for him because he found himself in a country that went for the nationalist variant of socialism, Italy, and thus he ended up in jail for the remainder of his life, and he would eventually die under guard in a hospital bed. Because, you know, back then it was pretty damn dangerous to have the incorrect interpretation of socialism. But Antonio Gramsci was, for all of his many flaws and, you know, failures of picking good political ideology, an absolute goddamn genius. And he came up with an idea that we are dealing with today. Namely that to have a successful socialist revolution, you need to first undermine the currently existing social systems. Basically, his idea was, okay, what is the question? Why is there not a socialist revolution? That was what caused fascism to rise in Italy when Mussolini eventually said, I am sick and tired of working, waiting for the workers to rise up, so I'm going to do it myself. So why aren't the workers rising up? Well, Gramsci and many other people's ideas was that society was just too damn comfortable and people were too damn indoctrinated into what they would refer to as bourgeois values. And thus, to get the workers to actually revolt and rise up to do what was actually best for them, they had to first be unindoctrinated out of bourgeois values. Now, again, we're talking in terms that were more relevant back then, but this then turned into a whole idea that has now finally begun to emerge today, which was essentially the idea of capturing the culture, where Gramsci, without actually stating it, but heavily indicating it, suggested that the best way to actually do this, to begin the socialist revolution and undermine the current society, was to move into relevant activities in that society, things that most people engage with or enjoyed. You know, like video gaming, for example, or entertainment, or television, or movies, and all of these things that we are all so 
submerged in today. Because if they can take these things over and begin teaching their ideas through these things, then they will actually be able to supplant what is the current bourgeois ideas by creating a competing cultural hegemony. This is the brilliantness of Gramsci's ideas, because none of this actually requires active subversion. If you approach somebody in modern society and say, hello there, I would like to tear all of this down, the person is probably going to be outraged or frightened. What do you mean? Our, our system's pretty good. I can eat fresh fruit and meat whenever I want. I play video games all day and watch movies. I, I, I'm, I'm quite happy because they are, in Gramsci's view, indoctrinated in bourgeois ideology, right? And so, before you can actually get him to flip, you need to turn his common sense into, all right, well, yeah, there isn't enough representation in this movie. Why aren't these characters black? Where is the LGBTK, etc.? By fracturing and turning people into smaller groups, right? Now, this is where we need to make an immediate large leap. And again, I'm oversimplifying here because in reality, we need to go from Gramsci through like half a dozen other people before we arrive at the current day. But I'm gonna leap over that for simplicity's sake to Kimberly Crenshaw, who is of course the creator of the idea of intersectionality. Now this is important because what we are dealing with today is the woke movement, and my definition of woke is viewing the world and approaching all of its problems through an intersectional lens. Which might sound like a lot of garbage because it's, well, kind of intended to sound like that. It is intendedly packed into very complex sounding and academic language because you're not really necessarily supposed to understand this. But to hypersimplify it, intersectionality created by Kimberly Crenshaw looks at the Antonian Gramscian ideal and thinks to herself, okay, but we, our world has evolved. Bourgeoisie is not the main problem in America. In fact, there are other problems. What is that problem? Well, we have apparently colorblind rules, right? So if you are, um, if you go to court and you say, hey, this company discriminated against me and wouldn't fire, wouldn't fire me, wouldn't hire me, excuse me, for being black. Okay, that's illegal. You don't get to do that. And if the court then finds that, yes, indeed, you were discriminated against based upon your skin color, they can lay a hefty fine on the company or even just, you know, uh, arrest people potentially. I don't know what the total ramifications is, but fines probably, right? Or force them to hire the person. However, Kimberly Crenshaw's uh, example then is, but what if a black woman went to the company and was then fired? Okay, the court goes, well, um, the company has black men working for it, and thus, obviously, it's not racist, so it's not discriminating against blacks. Okay, and the company has white women working at it, thus it is also clearly not discriminatory against women but no black women working at the company. And so Kimberly Crenshaw then posits that it is possible to have multiple sectors of oppression, where she is actually being refused to be hired in the company, not because she is black or because she's a woman, but because she is both, see? And it does make a certain degree of sense. But the problem is, the moment you get into this level of intersectionality, there is no end whatsoever at any point. Because the entire idea of intersectionality is basically to create an actual literal laundry list of things. Oh, I wasn't hired because of my age. Oh, I wasn't hired because of my sexuality. Oh, I wasn't hired because of my religion. Etc, 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 etc. And this then works into the idea of identitarianism, where you build your identity not necessarily based on your personality or who you are, but all of the various little things that build you up. Your sex, your religion, your gender, your politics, blah, 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 blah. This then begins to fracture society and create smaller interest groups rather than the large cultural hegemony, which Kimberly Crenshaw identifies as not the bourgeois, but the white hegemony. Now, white is a whole laden political term for their groups, not necessarily even referring to the skin color in, gen in general, but she then says that, okay, if this is true, if the cultural hegemony in America is the white hegemony, that is the bourgeois idea, then we are so indoctrinated into it that we cannot actually rise up against it naturally, because we are so steeped in it that 
It is literally just the world in which we exist. We have all been indoctrinated. That is her view. Thus, if you institute something like a colorblind law, for example, where you simply say, you must not discriminate, all that will do is actually continue the current system of white hegemony. And the only way to undermine it is to create an entirely new hegemonic system to rise up and replace it. This is why a colorblind law is still uh, part of the white system, because it does not explicitly advantage black people and black culture. Now, all of this sounds to me like a whole, <laughs> a whole whack and load of baloney. But that is the idea of wokeism, where you approach every problem through this idea, which is deeply Gramscian in the beginning, that we are all already indoctrinated into an established system. And we are so deep in it that we can't even tell that we are indoctrinated. Thus, the only way to get socialism, which is of course the truth, the light, and the only solution to our problems, to actually become palatable to the common man is to undermine it, to move into the institutions, both the official ones like schools, of course, obviously, and into hobbies, into entertainment, into television, and then start spreading their political point of view. This is where we return to my first example at the beginning of my video talk about Helldivers, showing off the fake account, which makes it kind of pretends to be the developers and goes, helpful reminder, fascism is bad. I can't remember the exact wordage there, but what was it? Friendly reminder, don't be a fascist? In a game, of course, that is not fascist. In fact, it is satirizing authoritarian regimes. This is the person, and the real beauty of it is, you don't need to know any of this. That's the genius of Gramsci. By simply saying, hey, we're gonna improve society somewhat, you begin moving into doing the capturing of the culture. You say, well, this makes sense, right? We, we have intersectionality. You could discriminate against somebody for being black and a woman, right? And since we are vehemently against discrimination in the modern world, people will go, yeah, that makes sense. You shouldn't do that. And you go, well, we should have more black characters because representation is important. And you go, yeah, we should. Well, we should have gay rights in this thing because gay rights is important. And yeah, we should. But all of these then just simply become tools to begin to tear down the thing. As the point is not gay rights. It is not representation. It is not anti-racism. The point is to begin tearing down the cultural hegemony that already exists to eventually replace it with socialism. And uh, the various passages that I've been showing here from Kimberly Crenshaw makes that very, very explicitly clear. If you actually go into their, their uh, writings, I was about to say readings there for some reason, into their writings, they have no problems actually admitting this. And if you go back to Gramsci as well, this is exactly what he describes, even though he couldn't outright state that they needed to do this because, well, he was in jail at the time. And the fascists were literally leaning over his shoulders going, what are you, what are you writing there, Gramsci? But that is who these people are. And 99% of them have no idea that this is what they are doing. They have simply been entrapped into the uh, grassroots moving, uh, um, grassroots movement of it, the appearance of it, where you take over culture, you take over culture via entertainment, via video games, via media, and thus you create the appearance of a grassroots movement. Because you as a person, if you're a fan of 40k or Hell Lives, for example, and you see this thing, you think to yourself, well, that's just normal, right? That wasn't forced in there, it was simply placed in there because this is what is good, right? Because the workers have assumed the position of inherent good. And from that position of automatic good, they can do anything and everything. Now we could then delve into the whole idea of how this is then intended to push the, um, the, um, I've forgotten the name of the window now, but the public perception of what is acceptable in political reality, so what is and isn't okay, further and further towards the left. That is who these people are. They're not all professional activists by any stretch of the imagination, but they are all affected by the same ideology whose own inevitable goal and aim is to subvert our current cultural hegemony to replace it with their own socialist system. And I, for one, at least... I don't like socialism very much. 
neither the international or the national is valiant, and so I am obviously in opposition to this, rather vehemently so, because I like our system. In fact, I would like to go back into our system. The entire idea of racism, for example, which was largely reinvigorated by critical race theory and intersectionality via Kimberly Crenshaw, well, racism was a problem that if we had not solved, we were getting very close to solving in the late 90s and early 2000s. Race was not, it was not a problem. And indeed, when you actually manage to give people actual entertainment, as at the end of the Asmund Gold clip actually a guy says, if you are getting people so deeply involved in their entertainment, in their escapism, Racism doesn't matter. Nobody's going to call you a racial slur in Helldivers because it's really not the priority at that point in time. And if you can return to the, again, 90s and 2000s, where there were so many TV shows with black characters, so many black stand-up comedians, that this becomes entirely normalized, well, that's what we want. Not for this to be used to push some sort of ideology, but simply for us to all be able to go, yeah, no, we're all colorblind. We don't actually care. We don't give a shit. This is the society we want to live in. It is an equal one. It is one in which we all have the same rights and the same privileges, and we are simply humans. That is the ideal, and it is the exact opposite of what the socialists will want to create, because in that society, well, believe it or not, there's not going to be a whole lot of room for revolutionary thinking. Because again, we've got it pretty damn good. Is our current system perfect? No, of course not. No system can ever be truly perfect. But today, more of us live in abject wealth than ever before. Most of us live better than the kings of old. We can eat fresh fruit whenever we want. We can eat bananas flown out from the other side of the world. We can have ice whenever we want. We can have as many sweets as we want. <coughs> Hamburgers, meat in a patty, has become junk food. Whereas you don't even need to go back a couple hundred years maybe before meat in and of itself was precious. For all of the flaws of our modern system, we have clearly created a pretty damn good period to be alive. And I for one would rather we stay in it rather than continuing down the socialist rabbit hole. And you, hopefully that will have explained some of what and who they are, even though it still took me 10 minutes, even though I was trying to be quick, but again, uh, this is unironically a very complicated question to answer, which if you really wanted to get into detail, is probably going to take a solid hour at least, as once more we skipped about, oh, you know, half a dozen or two dozen thought leaders in between Gramsci and Crenshaw, but anyways, until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for listening, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.